Good afternoon, uh, good morning, or good evening, whenever you're listening to us. Uh, welcome. This is uh, the Green Island Podcast. I'm Bernard Sheehan, co-author co -author of the novel Hard Border. And also on the line with us is the uh, co-author here, James Sheehan. Hard Border is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Um, we'd really uh, love for you to uh, pick, it, pick it up. It talks about Ireland in... Uh, really more modern times kind of some of the things that are going on around right now but also um what uh it was said a couple years ago during the times of uh really brexit and when the hard border was potentially going up so that's where we've come up with the name with that we're going to continue to talk about uh if you like the um current current things that are going on in Ireland and also how that affects the rest of the world, because that's really the perspective we're coming at here is to say, listen, this is the laboratory for a lot of the things that are coming um, into the world and it's being uh, tested in uh, this small island up in the North Atlantic that has only like 4 million people in it. So um, that's that's the what we're talking about. But some of the things are a little bit... Uh, uh, a little bit uh, more on the radar. And uh, as we've uh, seen in the last couple of weeks, hey, we may have a new president in Ireland with uh, Conor McGregor going for it. So James, uh, thanks for uh, spending the time here with us. Uh, thanks, Bern. Yeah, no, great to be with you. And um, just on the book uh, real quick, I think uh, Amazon is going to do a promotion where they'll be dropping the price down to virtually, I think, zero dollars, kind of giving it away for free to kind of um, people interested in the subject matter, whether it's Ireland, England, Brexit, uh, Druidism, you know, occult kind of behavior mixed with high finance and capital. Um, and right now it's 50% off. And uh, um, throughout the course of January, we will be putting it back up to its original price of $9.99 for the uh, Kindle series. And uh, fourteen nine or thirteen ninety nine for the softback, and uh, I think it was seventeen or eighteen ninety nine for the hardback. Um, so yeah, but uh, there'll be a promotion going out with Amazon quite soon. So look out for it, and it should be a good read. It's a quick read. It's a great story. It's uh, fictional, so um, you know it's loosely based on kind of our experiences, but it's a good story, a great ending from what uh, people have been telling me. And uh, yeah, check it out, especially if it's kind of almost for free on Kindle. So. That'll be great. But yeah, today we're going to talk about Conor McGregor. And this will be an interesting one because of his rumor that he's going to run for president of Ireland. And I think just giving the background of what the president does in Ireland will be key to kind of understanding a little bit more about Ireland compared to its parliamentary system that goes on virtually there and throughout the European Union where, um, you know, they, it's almost a, uh, a job for life if you kind of get the right constituency that keeps voting you in. Uh, but uh on that regard, the president comes around every couple of years and it's a real chance to get someone new in there that has kind of a, you know, the right to um, have a say, but it's it's voted on by the general population. And it should be a good watch because I think the general president uh, president right now is he's termed out. So they have okay. to look for a new face and it should be a good uh, uh, a bit of soap opera, I believe. Interesting. I wasn't sure what the terms were there um, or if there were term limits. So that's interesting to hear because this guy who's uh, the president right now, he's been in for quite a while. It seems like he's been kind of around, you know, for quite a few years. I would say, yeah, I, I don't know the exact term limits. I should have looked it up actually before this, but I can, we'll get to the audience throughout the course of this web chat, but it's, uh, I think it's like four or five, six years per term. And he's going, I think it's two terms. So he's termed out because we had like two women before him, a woman named Mary McAleese and another woman called Mary Robinson. Robinson, right. And they were, they became like pretty big in kind of um, politics afterwards. Uh, and it's, again, more like a job for uh, like the Queen of England. Uh, they open up Parliament, they sign, they have some kind of good veto uh, rights, which we'll explain. But ultimately, it's like a pop and circumstances type situation. President Biden comes over, he's going to meet with the president. It's all kind of it's supposed to be politically neutral. But unfortunately, it's certainly anything but. Um, and uh, but we have, a you know, this guy's quite interesting because he looks like a little leprechaun and it's quite i always call him like he's short and he's stouty and he has you know and i always kind of like finally they got like 
a little leprechaun to actually represent the Irish people. And it's kind of funny to see him, but he's pretty uh, left wing and always has been his entire career. And I watched some clips before this podcast and, you know, it's uh, again, a guy from a broken house in Limerick, which anybody who knows Ireland, Limerick is kind of, you know, the rough and tumble place. It's where Angela's ashes was, um, that famous book was kind of mm-hmm. centered around right. and uh and he moved in with his parents from Clara, but he was always very left wing super left wing where you know he's attacking elon musk right now and so there's no nonpartisan to it but um it would be interesting if conor mcgregor gets in here that will flip the script because the 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 deep state will go absolutely crazy <laughs> and I think it's worth us just discussing that because I don't think he, they're going to stop him like no tomorrow. I mean, you think it's bad what they're doing with Trump. They're, it's going to be a factor of 10 with Conor McGregor, where I would say he's already intimidated not to take this on. I think it was maybe a knee gut reaction to get some press because that's going to be a recipe for disaster. They need a, a like minded person. And just because at the end of the day, parliament vote on a law, but the president virtually has the pop and circumstances has to stamp it. You know, and if it's not in line with, say, the Constitution, um, they can they could delay it. They can send it to the Supreme Court to review it. Uh, They can send it back to Parliament if the Supreme Court uh, says it's not constitutional, which I don't think they would ever do, Um, you know, because, again, Ireland, it's a there's only one political party. It's it's a uniparty. They have two main parties, but it's virtually a uniparty. Uh, they all think the same. It's all left-wing uh, socialist-type mentality. Um, and Conor McGregor's not that person. And to be right. the guy who would have the veto right on a, a law such as the the hate crime speech a law that we uh, talked about in the last episode, I think they're going to do everything they can to call it a day on him from probably going after his agent. or I mean, he is in the UFC, so that's, you know, good going for him. I mean, it's kind of we consider almost a right wing organization at this point uh, every time Trump steps out. But I mean, he still has a lot of business interests in Ireland, whether it be, you know, his prop something whiskey, uh, which is, you know, quite valuable. And, um, you know, who knows after that, whether the inspectors are going to come in and have some food and drug relation issues with it. So uh, it would be interesting just to chat around that. Well, he's also not part of the the club. He's not a politician. He hasn't been around this guy who's in now Higgins. He's been in the presidency since 2011. So 12 years already. But even before that, he was like mayor of Galway and he had a history. He's, he's in, he's in the group. He's been in in both political parties, or I I take that back. He was uh, initially, it says here is Fianna Fáil and then he's a labor, but he's still been a part of the system forever. I mean, he's in his eighties for crying out loud. Conor McGregor is a loud bombastic, guy i mean he backs it up but every year is my fucking year (laughs) but i think his fighting days are more or less behind him if i'm not mistaken and he is uh it's the business interests that are going to be at the forefront for him and uh i don't think that uh, the powers that be in ireland are going to want him representing the country when uh another head of state comes into town or um you know, on the world stage because he's loud. He's, uh, I think one of the things with Ireland that they've got going and is sort of on brand is to be under the radar and to be that small island uh, that's not, uh, doesn't have the spotlight on it way, the way maybe a France or Germany or an Italy has. Uh, it's uh, it's um, it's really different from that, e- you know, it's a part of Europe, it's part of the EU, but it doesn't have um, all of the uh, the kind of that uh, that high profile piece that goes along with it, and Connor would definitely bring that along if he if he ended up even running, much less winning the presidency. One hundred percent. And again, Ireland is running off U.S. Uh, foreign companies. I mean, that is their that's their bread and butter, and. They're not aligned with, even if Conor McGregor it will say is a right wing now, or as they would label anybody who's not center left extremist, uh, they're going to be upset and threaten Ireland's, you know, cash flow issues 
uh, my that's only an assumption, but that's only one example of that. But he, you know, he he has a loud mouth. That's what made him so popular in uh, the UFC. That he was kind of just just fun to watch and just loved running in his mouth. And it would be a great thing to see um, him in there and just kind of mess up the status quo. But I would say, like, just even by his um, recent, you know, uh, them attacking him, uh, you know, really shine the light on Ireland's totalitarianism. But what's going on in, in Ireland is is really quite terrifying. And he's at the centre of it because you're seeing a huge reaction to what happened with this attack on three kids and a woman by someone who's actually a, a, a naturalised Irish citizen but came in as Nigerian. And it all goes back to this ongoing raging issue of immigration. Conor McGregor's put himself right in the middle of it. Basically, it's Ireland, we're at war. What do you make of this? The, the thing that concerns me, though, and this is going to be a deeply un unpopular point, but it's that to tweet something and then be investigated for it frightens me because it's setting a, a quite dangerous precedent. So, well, I felt the same about Tommy Robinson. This is what I was right? going to say to being you, Being yes. arrested at the weekend. I'm like, what did he do to deserve being arrested? I mean, James, this is a... You know, you can, you can abhor the people. I actually like Conor McGregor, for what it's worth, but, but in Tommy Robinson's case, I have no truck with him whatsoever, and I think he's a pretty poisonous individual. However... I feel uncomfortable like you did. Are we overstretching now in the way we police these things? Yeah, I mean, it, clearly Ireland isn't at war and he's just thrown himself in, whether he's drunk. But I'm more concerned about the fact that the police could be knocking at your door for a tweet. You never see anybody on the left arrested for a tweet. You only ever see people on the right. Guys... And that's not what they want. They want the, the democracy to die in darkness. And Ireland is, again, the per perfect petri dish to do that uh and they don't want that kind of messed up at all because they have the sympathy of the irish people uh or the sympathy almost of the world because of so many expats uh that you know moved out of uh, ireland into foreign countries and that's kind of their you know the the prior the the government's um argument is like, well, you know, we we were allowed to colonize the rest of the world. Why don't we let people into our country to do that? And, and the, the response from everybody's like, yeah, but we worked. <laughs> you know, we didn't come mm -hmm. and kind of suck off the system where, you know, I was listening to a podcast in prep for this and the guy's like, look, my wife's mom just sold a house to a guy who has no income, but somehow has 500 grand to buy a house and he pulled from Ukraine. He pulled up in like a crappy Porsche. He's there like a couple months and he's already buying $500,000 house, which is virtually outpricing other people, you know, yeah. the young millennials that are trying to get a foothold. And it's just like, this is the problem that they're having. It's just, they're not working the system. They're are working with the system and kind of what the Irish did were, you know, far and away with Tom Cruise. They're the ones that are going into the mines and blowing them up, you know, send the Irish guy in there. They're doing the difficult jobs or they're the ones who are fighting in the civil war. That's not, they're the ones who are building the UK and Ireland or UK and US. That's not what's happening here. It's it's the stabbing, for example, that created the riots. That guy was on the dole or the government for 10, 15 years, and he should have been deported and they stopped him. And he was caught with a knife trying to do the same thing like a couple months before and they let him go. Yeah. Um, and I would, this is news to me, but this is why they're all up in arms. And apparently it's not just, you know, the hardcore, as you would say, right wing, not you would, but the, the media would right wing extremists. It's the um, seventy-five percent of the Irish people are getting online with this, and they're the ones who have, vote, have voted for the Uniparty and stuff like that. It's very much propaganda. I see at this point because even I was just pulling up like just a little bit of YouTube, and it's everything's right-wing extremist. If you kind of challenge right. any of this, so it's uh, and that's uh, the president. D. Higgins, like he was almost the forefront of that. Like he was, if you look him up in like 40 years ago, it was always socialism and almost communism. And now it's like his time. Uh, that was what he was shooting for. And of course, then like they get into helping kids with Africa. That was his thing. Because, you know, that's the that's the easiest way in Ireland, from what I understand, is to funnel money. It's like, oh, we give it to people in Africa. Bono does it. You know, a bunch of charities do it. And how much actually goes to Africa? I mean, they're living, not Bono, but like the ones who run these charities are living in Fox Rock, you know, in million dollar houses. Sure. And it's like, okay, so 
uh, he, he's part of the system. And I think he was um, also a uh, University of Galway president for a long time and was on the, so he, he's, he's, he's a boys club guy and yeah. Connor's not, and Connor has a following and that's why they're attacking him because he has those 10 million or millions of people that will listen to what he says that are not kind of elected bureaucrats and they want to go after him for that. It's like, it's not his fault that people watch him. But it's like, well, it's his fault if we give him a platform or a topic. Like they're going to stop him, and it'll be what it'll be interesting to see. Like if Connor is listening to this, go for it. Like if you really want to mess up the system, like what Trump's doing and showing what the, what they will do to you, go for it because that's the best thing you can do. But these guys, you know, they love their Lamborghinis. They love they only talk to a degree, but they really don't put their money on the line. And that's hey, coming from that, we were. That's what we did. We put our money on the lines and we got absolutely smashed. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. It's just like you can go to a certain point of talk, but once you start putting your business interests on the line and you still don't relent, they'll take it and they'll come after you for more. And uh, that's where you're kind of the rubber meets the road, where Trump is facing jail time. So good for him, you know, um, and I would like to see Connor do the same. Well, yeah, those parallels there are pretty in incredible. But I think the thing that uh, that that Connor will have to deal with is you know, when you talk about the riots, you talk about those stabbings. Is that how how long is it before they start calling him a right wing extremist? It's not going to be long if he really continues up with it. I know Mate, they're already calling him that. Oh, okay, There's, I, the, the, I, the, I, I I didn't know that they had actually put those two together. But I, I knew oh, it was yeah. inevitable. Oh, it's right now. They're calling him a right wing okay. uh, extremist. So and it's all... anybody who doesn't toe the line. That's yeah. their label for him. And it's, yeah. it's a blanket label. But he also fits the demographic demographic too, because he is a uh, he's from a working class background, and you know he is he's a fighter, and he's come up uh, really through if you like the old, an old school kind of Irish way of sports. And uh, as particularly, uh, you know, combat sports, if you like, with uh, kind of like a John L. Sullivan uh, type of thing with uh, with boxing. And he's done the exact same thing. But having said that, you know, sports only gets you so far. It doesn't get you into the club. And uh, they're if they're turning around and and calling him uh, calling him the right wing extremist, that's to scare him off. So it'll be interesting to see if it does that. Because that's what's designed to do. Just like here in the U.S., oh. calling somebody racist. No, exactly. It's the right wing, and it's because they won't, don't want to engage in an argument with them. They want to uh, just put them down. It's kind of just like, well, why haven't you arrested the guy, or why haven't you looked into investigating the immigration? It's like we don't want to talk about that. We want to label you. We want to kind of dig up stuff on you, and we want to divert the public's attention towards something you've done rather than what we're doing. Right. And it's it's just global right now. It's kind of a, a deflection standpoint. It's quite interesting. But Conor McGregor is not just like Ireland's small. It's it's not just he's not just a sports figure because he's so massive. I mean, what, 700 or 500, 700 million in sports like we had little rugby players or, you know, they're making a million or two and they were like the gods of Ireland. But this guy is well beyond them, yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, and he he has the global. No one knows the rugby players in Ireland. They barely know Roy Keane, who was like uh, the head of Manchester United for a real long time. Excellent football player. Um, but it was the time of David Beckham. So it's like uh, Conor McGregor is kind of the David Beckham of the UK, you know. The last time for the uh, Mayweather fight, there was a, a video that someone posted of Mandalay Bay. And Mandalay Bay was not even where the fight was taking place. And the Irish had this one hallway completely filled, and they were all singing. They were singing some they crazy down, like, Irish Sixth song. They like 6th Avenue in New York. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. It's one it little amazing. island. It's a little island. It's they not big. They all got on a plane. It's fucking crazy. And there's a lot of us here, too. You know, and I say us. Yeah. I got a little in me, one quarter. That's there's it, there's so many more Irish or Irish part Irish people in America. There's more than there are Irish people in Ireland. They did a lot of fucking. Yeah, they came over here and did a lot of fucking. Yeah. And they and they weren't discriminate about you know color or creed or <laughs> any of that. Meanwhile, Jamie's got a notorious T-shirt on with the Irish flag. Look at yeah. you, savage. Is that available at youngjamie.com? There's a link there if you need it. Oh my goodness. 
powerful commerce. <laughs> I want to try this whiskey, honestly, that he's got. I, I've got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, you're the last time for the uh, Mayweather fight. He's yeah. our. He's and he he has a platform, but he's not bought in or yet. But again, once they start going after his um his livelihood or his kind of business interests, that's when the rubber meets the road, and it'll be really great to see how he does that because, like, you know, it happened again with Trump. It's a good parallel, unfortunately. Uh, but people got to stand up. You just can't take the, the coin all the time. When's, when's money? When's enough? To, you know, 20 million or 10 million should do anybody. You have 700. So you have 600 you can throw to the throw into the fire and yeah. see what happens. And, and hey, you could come on top. I mean, you get a plum, like the presidency is a plum job. You get a castle. I mean, if you kind of figuratively say it's like the Queen of England, you get a huge house in the middle of Phoenix Park that has like 1,700 acres. You get stables a pool, you know, it's, it's no joke. You're living the life of luxury. You're, you're traveling around. You're virtually just a spokesman. And it would be good to see like Conor McGregor mixing it up with the heads of state, but they're not even like, you know, it's just, it's pop and circumstance. It's a, it's a laugh. It's that they're not, but they do have that veto issue, which could really cause them problems. He's like, no, I don't want this hate, hate law speech. Uh, it's not constitutional. Let's get the Supreme Court involved. And he'd, he'd mix it up. And I think someone needs to be in there instead of a boys club that's on the rubber stamp this this stuff because it's not constitutional. And we've lived it. And I've challenged the con they did stuff that wasn't constitutional with us. But as we explained in the last episode, I couldn't bring it to the EU because they intimidate the lawyers that you need a lawyer from Ireland to bring it. Yeah. So, um, you know, and him to become the president, he needs a few politicians to give him like a signature. And there's kind of a, a way to do that. And I don't think they'll give him a signature, to be honest with you, because they'll know he'll probably win and then they'll be blackballed and their careers are done. And um, that's only the beginning of it. Well, very much like uh, Trump when um, they almost dared him to run and they were mocking him and humiliating him. They had him at the... Uh, the Capitol, um, you know, their, their, the press corps dinner where they're like, oh, you know, I think uh, Trump's a joke or there's a, and they really dared him to run, even though they came after him. So it'll be interesting to see if they intimidate Connor out of it, or they try to intimidate him. And he's just like, okay, you guys think you can intimidate me, but you've only convinced me now to run for this office. Because as you say, even though it's, a ceremonial position or it's a head of state position, it's still influential. He will be the face of Ireland. And that is, you know, right now they've got a uh, little leprechaun who's got his dog next to him all the time. And gosh, isn't that nice? And the Irish are just such great, great for a laugh, you know, a beer and a laugh type of attitude. That's not the way it would be. That wouldn't be the, the vision if, uh, if Connor's that head of state. So, it's uh, it would be it would be really different and it would turn the corner and change the dynamic of the country so it would we it, I, we really have to see how it goes but it'll be interesting to see if he gets intimidated out or if that's only going to harden him and make him want to really go for it rather than just kind of talk well i think he should really go for it because he does have a good like he has the young population a going for him. He has, um, you know, I can't say the middle population, let's say 55, 35 to 55, because I think they're captured. So, uh, but, uh, you know, he might have the older guys, but he definitely has those rough, hardworking construction guys that'll be on his part, on top of the international community, they'll be all for, for him. So, um, and if you see kind of the rough guys that get elected to say parliament um, or even the EU, they're the ones that are making the headlines of like actually bringing these issues that the EU doesn't want to hear like whether it's like, hey, let's investigate the COVID deaths. And it's just like, this is crazy. And it's only the two Irish guys in parliament that are bringing it up or let's investigate this. And they're like, hush, hush, we don't want to talk about that. And I think Conor McGregor would do wonderful to bring the real Ireland to light. And hey, it would probably even improve tourism uh, because people want to go see it and come see like what really happens. And that's what the book is all about. It's kind of give you a preview or kind of a, a little glimpse onto what really happens there because it's all it's all in the dark and it's all quietly quiet and you know we we like it that way but really ireland is almost at the forefront of eu politics it's just 
because they have the multinationals, because they have all these guys, the English speaking, they're the last. It's just, uh, and the Irish are a different kind of breed. It's right. uh, so yeah. it should be very, but getting Conor McGregor in there who wouldn't give really a crap because it's like, hey, I have F you money uh, if they don't take it away. So I would say they're actively plotting. And it's a shame that the, like the Leo Varadkar, the PM, uh, who's been there kind of almost 10, 20 years. I mean, he didn't even, I think, I, correct me if I'm wrong, he was either, he's a direct um, uh, immigrant from India or his dad certainly was like when he was just about to be born. So mm -hmm. like they're direct immigrants from India and like he was uh, very, like it, it's kind of interesting because when he first came on the scene, he was more kind of like, oh, I don't know about the abortion law, but he just got played. He, he's c completely converted to now we're going to instig instig instigate totalitarian laws and stuff. And uh, he, that wasn't him when he first came on the scenes, even though he displaced like a guy who would have kind of ushered all this stuff in because he was a homosexual is part. It was just at that right time. And they didn't want the same old guy that daddy ran before. They wanted a new guy and let's get the doctor. And he's almost out. But just over COVID, I think he went brainwashed where he saw totalitarian, where he was like, you know, he should have almost been a peach like Boris. I mean, by having like he was out doing stuff when everybody else was locked in. Uh, and it's just I think it's uh, he's just gone now. He's either taken the soup or he's been corrupted or it's just like we're going to replace you if you don't kind of push these. And he's happy to do it now. And that's it's kind of a shame because there's no principles anymore. And if we got a guy like Conor McGregor or even guys like him, if you wanted to support, like, go for it. But I think Conor McGregor is such an international presence that even if he loses, he wins because it will kind of show how the world works in this little Petri dish. I mean, we see how it works in Ireland and America for 360 million people. Imagine with four and a half. I mean, they had what, 500,000 immigrants just in like the last two or three years. It's crazy um, where people can't go out to their towns anymore. They don't know who's coming up. So it's virtually right. almost America on steroids, but they keep it hush hush. And it's quite a shame. And again, the 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 police are not there. The police are there to enforce to make sure that like you don't say a word or we're coming after you, yeah. you know, don't and a podcaster I was listening to right before this said that he's like, once I start getting traction, it was the police were knocking on my door, right. uh, just asking questions. Yep. Yeah, they're the secret police now. I mean, and we should probably think about uh, devoting an entire uh, episode around uh, the government and the the Taoiseach, you know, as as far as because there's an there's another way to look at that that he could also have been, if you like, almost like an Obama, just kind of pretending to be all nice, but really being a totalitarian underneath the whole time. So, and, and I feel like a lot of these folks had their chance with COVID and they took it, but it would be interesting again with Connor to go for the presidency because he's a young guy. That's the thing too. He's 35 years old. So I don't even know, it, you know, again, just kind of the parallels here in the U S that you have to be, I think 40 to be president. So I don't know if they've got the same age restriction over there or if there's uh, I think it's 35. Know, it is 35. So he is eligible then to run. Because he's right yeah, there. and he has he is cash 35. to do it. He's got compared the, to yeah. everybody else. It's yeah. usually the small little pol like not even politicians run for president because I think they're precluded. It's mainly kind of like ex politicians or mm -hmm. something like that, you know, or maybe they'll probably get like an ex PM to try to. The, but he like these guys are forgotten about. They work for now. Like once once you're the ex prime minister, you eventually go like Tony Blair to work for a big bank and get paid out or. You know, um, work for a private equity firm and you're going to make your millions and rolling back into that when you don't have that social media presence is a little difficult. And to be honest with you, everybody hates politicians there. They vote for them, but they hate them. They're like, yeah, I hate, you know, so a guy like a Bertie O'Hearn that ushered in kind of the Celtic tiger there, you know, they want to see the end of him. And like, so the, a lot of them are kind of, there's really no one to challenge them, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But they that won't stop them from trying to stop him. And I think he should almost just create a whole documentary uh, series around just him running, because then it just collects all the innuendos. Like that would be an amazing Netflix documentary of just watching sure. him run, uh, yeah. you know, and just uh, and just see how they like, oh, how they're going to attack him because game on. That's what he's that's what's going to happen. Uh, yeah. and, uh, they have no choice because it's not even Ireland, it's the EU and they can't have their little, um, 
country being disrupted by, uh, you know, a Conor McGregor, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, exactly. So that would be, uh, that'd be cool. I will definitely keep an eye out for it and, and watch it uh, further. Hopefully he'll have the uh, the guts to go for it because, like you said, I mean, they, they want statesmen. He's not really a statesman, <laughs> so he would be somebody that would really shake things up uh, even without being a, a politician. So, you know, I think we'll keep an eye out for it. And this is exactly the type of thing we're talking about in Hard Border where the unlikely is happening and it's real and uh it's 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 hard to believe but that's the reality and that's these are the sorts of things we want to bring to the forefront and really get the spotlight on because if nothing else they're they're really interesting and entertaining so um i think with that Big we'll, we'll, but, we'll uh, sorry just to touch on yeah. that before you close off but i i'm i think everybody's sick of statesmen Statesman, what is a statesman? It's a it's a it's a uh, a guy who took the soup, who plays the game, uh, you know, who takes orders. Like, oh, so you can have a chat or whatever. It's like I would rather listen to, like Joe Rogan or someone like that who actually kind of says the truth. That these statesmen are just hot on. Let's have a laugh and have, have a picture and have my dog with you and blah blah blah. Nothing gets done. That's right. why the normal process happens. And it's like no, let's get proper statesmen in there to say no. And why are you doing it? Let's ask questions. And, you know, I don't think that's right. No, these statesmen are a joke. They're all captured. It's there is no more statesmen. They're 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 theater actors. Uh, Justin Trudeau is not a statesman. He's an actor, you know, and right. enough of that. It's, it's time to call it a day. Why they ruin countries like that. It's time to bring in. Uh, I don't there should be no more statesmen. The, the word should be outlawed, <laughs> you know, and let's bring in some hard, you know, guys who aren't lawyers because there's no such thing as the law anymore either. And just have like, you know, guys who actually work jobs and have to put food on the table. Those are the guys we want to hear from, not the guys who have lived plush jobs and have just been uh, stepping on people all the way to the top of the ladder, you know? Right. Yep. So hopefully, uh, it'll, again, it'll be interesting to see if that's uh, the way uh, Connor feels about it and his people and, and he decides to go for it. So we'll keep an eye and, and talk about it further. I don't think this is the last time we're going to be talking about him on our, on our calls here. No, we'll try to get an interview with them. If we can, Ooh. I'll reach out. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, appreciate it, James. Thanks so much. Will, and thank you, uh, audience, for uh, listening in with us here. Again, uh, Bernard Sheehan and James Sheehan uh, on with you. We're the authors of Hard Border. Hopefully you'll uh, purchase and take a look. And uh, we've got a lot more stories, uh, not just the ones we're talking about here, but more, uh, more to tell as well. So uh, please keep an eye out for that. And we're going to continue to roll. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Bert. All right, See you then.